Americans on the move. Sportsmen, businessmen, adventure or pleasure-seeking men and women from all parts of the country. On the move to other parts of the country. With very little else in common but their desires for freedom and mobility. But as their stories unfold, each traveler will share a connecting link, will become a part of a communications network that is in fact a lifeline. And each traveler, regardless of who or where they are or how and when they travel, will have a common rendezvous. And their fate will be in the hands of the federal agency responsible for search and rescue in the continental United States. This is the Air Force Rescue Coordination Center at Scott Air Force Base, Illinois. The personnel appearing in this presentation are not actors, but are dedicated Air Force people whose coordination efforts are aimed at saving lives. An information request message, an INREC, comes from the Federal Aviation Agency. It indicates that an emergency situation may be developing. Major Prescott, this information request just came across from FAA. The FAA message is compared with active emergency locator transmitter reports. If the NREC moves to the alert stage, the center will take immediate action. This is 182 with four people on board. According to the information request, a Cessna 182 with four passengers left Boulder, Colorado at 7.50 a.m., headed for Red Bluff, California, without filing a flight plan. Somebody thought he was overdue and called. Time data indicates possible fuel exhaustion. Either the pilot has landed en route to refuel, or he is down somewhere in the mountainous areas of Colorado, Utah, Nevada, or California. Without a flight plan, we don't know... Weather advisories show strong headwinds and a possible snowstorm brewing. Without a flight plan, the center can only calculate the range by theorizing that no trouble occurred in flight. This calculation, based on fuel capacity, speed, and wind velocity, will be hampered by not knowing the pilot's planned altitude. He could have made it to Utah without refueling. Okay, Sarge, why don't we keep a close eye on this one, and I'll go ahead and uh, plot the proper route of flight, uh, mark the airport where he may have landed, maybe still sitting there waiting. ...owner in the commercial registry, so we can start a data file. The registry contains a listing of over 180,000 light aircraft registered in the United States. By cross-referencing the aircraft's tail number with the owner's name and address, a point of contact is obtained, which may provide some additional information. We just got an emergency locator transmitter report from a commercial airliner. He picked it up 40 miles northeast of Redding, California. This will be ELT incident number 1207. I'll stay on this one, Ron. Looks like we may have a mission here. Okay. So when I called Coleman Field... The Cessna 182, tail number 83 Gulf, refueled and left Coleman Field, Utah, without checking en route weather. We know he got that far, then. We better get some more background information on that pilot and see how much bad weather flying experience he has. Air Force Rescue Major Tub speaking. Uh, yes, Major. This is uh, Frank Carpenter. I'm Director of Emergency Services in Virginia. I think I got a problem for you. Yes, sir. Can we help you? Well, we got a bad situation here. Report from the county sheriff at Sperryville. That's about 25 miles due south of Front Royal. Well, it seems that these two young hikers set out on the trails along the Shenandoah National Forest to explore some caves and what have you, against the posted warnings, mind you. And one of them, a girl fell down into one of the caves and is unconscious. Now, her boyfriend couldn't get to her, and he thinks maybe her leg's broken. Pretty bad scene, I'd say. Is the boy with the sheriff now? No, no, that's just it. Now, he made his way to the main road, flanked down a motorist, and asked him to call the sheriff, who in turn called us. But that boy didn't stay with the motorist. He said he was going to go back and find a girl and 
stay with her till help That's just come. great. Now we have two missing persons yeah, on our hands. Yeah, that's right. And we're going to have to try to locate the cave and get the girl out. Okay, exactly what do you need? Well, now the sheriff, his name's Bacotti, Gene Bacotti, he requested an airlift to get a team of searchers into the area. It's going to take too long by ground transport. And no telling how far that boy walked till he found that motorist, if you know what I mean. Do you know, do you ha have the approximate location where the boy stopped the motorist? Yeah, yeah, right. It was on the old Loray Road, about 20 miles west of Sperryville. I got the map coordinates if you'd like to have me give them to you right now. Okay, go ahead. Well, I read it at uh, 38 degrees, 39 minutes north, and uh, 78 degrees, 12 minutes west. Yeah, west, 12 minutes west. 38, 39 north, 78, 12 west. That's right. I'll have to check and see if there's an aircraft available. Please stand by. I'll get right back with you. Rescue 095, I copy. Go ahead. Ops normal report. Negative sighting on that missing fishing boat. We'll continue search pattern. That's negative sighting. I copy Rescue 095. Be advised the Coast Guard has just requested an H-53 Super Jolly Green Hilo for standby. Possible hoist pickup. Rescue 095, roger. When we confirm the launch, we'll put you in direct contact with the aircraft commander for vector to the search area. That's right, Mr. Carpenter. I contacted the Army Forces Command at Fort McPherson, Georgia. They can dispatch two Army Huey helicopters out of the base nearest the search area. That would be Fort Lee. Oh, fine, fine. I know where that is. When can they be at uh, Lynchburg to pick up the volunteer search party? How soon? Will they... Within 45 minutes, but they're not hoist equipped, and they'll need a refueling area near the search site. A fuel truck will be dispatched if you'll give me a refueling location. Well, let's see. There's a drive-in restaurant just north of Sperryville. I'll clear the area so the chopper can land and uh, meet your truck. Okay, Mr. Carpenter, this will be mission number 2-119 Alpha. I have Aircraft Commander Major Rollins of the 5th Battalion at Fort Lee and Sheriff Ducati in Lynchburg holding on the line. Stand by for a conference, Pat. Okay, sure enough. Go ahead, OES. Major Rollins and Sheriff Ducati are on the line. That's roughly in line with the other ELT. In the flight path of H3 Golf. Yeah, the weather's turning up pretty fast out there. Another That's ELT better, uh, appears, and the center starts action on it immediately. It is roughly in line with the first ELT and the possible flight path of 83 Gulf. Meanwhile, the registry shows 83 Gulf is owned by a company in Boulder. No individual name, and a telephone call indicates the place is closed over the weekend. A call back Monday situation. But Monday may be too late. The controller must call the sheriff in Boulder and request his help in identifying the Cessna's pilot. Number tacked up there. Good work. Expect the call back on at any minute. Why don't you lend me your incident sheet on this? Uh, we've got a mission here. You, you track down the pilot, I'll start an alert. I've already checked with the uh, Office of Emergency Services in the state for uh, reports and sightings. This is the RCC. Uh, could you fix me up with the phone patch with the uh, 41st Rescue Wing at McClellan and the uh, Rescue DO, please? Stand by. Op Center, Director of Operations. 41st Wing, Director of Operations. Uh, sir, this is the RCC at Scott. I have uh, the Rescue DO with us on the line, and uh, we have two ELT reports in your area. They look like they might tie in with the uh, an overdue aircraft that we have. I'll be requesting an HC-130. Hold on while I check availability. What are the details? Okay, it's a Cessna 182 from Boulder, Colorado to Red Bluff, California. It's got four uh, people on board, and it had one refueling stop en route. Did you get an alert notice on it? Uh, no, sir, not yet, but uh, it sure looks like it's going to be a mission. You mean pilot flew on from Utah? Weather's approaching zero, zero along that route. Any reports from flight stations along the way? Uh, negative, sir. Do you have locations for the ELTs? 
Uh, yes, sir. The, the one furthest to the west is 4055 North, 12140 West. That's just near Badger Lake. Right. I know that area. I've been hunting up there before. Check for a small airfield due south from the lake. He may have put down there. Where's the other ELT? Okay, the other one's at uh, 4028 North, 12020 West. Uh, I think we should go for this one first. It looks like the uh, best prospect for our target. I don't think you could have got much further west than that. Roger, hold on while I check. Okay, thanks. Yeah, it looks like uh, we can get you an HC-130. Call sign is Rescue 904. 41st DO approves. Okay, looks like a good mission. ARRS approves. Okay, uh, affirmative, the, the mission number is going to be 7-120. And uh, request you give me a call on your launch time. I'll get right back to you with that. 41st dropping off the line. Director of Operations out. National Alert Warning System, Colorado Springs. National 1, this is the Air Force Rescue Coordination Center. We have a missing aircraft, possibly down. What is your address C group, Air Force Rescue? It'll be Colorado, Utah, Nevada, law enforcement. The California Office of Emergency Services has already been notified. The uh, aircraft description is a Cessna 182, tail number November 2583. Air Force Rescue Center, Major Prescott. This is the DO, 41st of McClellan. Yes, sir, go ahead. Rescue 904 is airborne, and we have a Jolly Green and an HC-130 tanker standing by. I uh, copy. Uh, we've checked out that first ELT with a phone call to uh, Goose Valley Airport. Yes, that's the one I meant. Yeah, it was inadvertently uh, activated by an aircraft parked uh, alongside the runway. It's uh, been turned off now, and you can have the HC-130 proceed to uh, the second ELT. Roger, RCC. I'll have the aircraft commander from 904 reach you via Scott Airways on HF radio. Thank you, sir. While the search and rescue effort continues, the crash survivors have managed to get down the mountain to a more sheltered area. Fortunately, they are all alive and optimistic of being rescued. This just came off the teletype. Another alert notice from FAA Cessna 83 Golf uh, is overdue. Okay, this makes it official. Let's go ahead and start an instant log on it. The alert notice has just come in from the FAA confirming that Cessna N2583 Gulf is overdue and the center's coordination effort goes into action. The airplane was borrowed by a company employee, Robert Henderson. He has about 65 hours of flying time and is not instrument rated. Henderson's boss says that he is the never say die type who would risk bad weather flying over mountainous terrain. Fortunately, the airplane was equipped with an ELT to call his uh, mother in Red Bluff, California and see if she'd heard from him. Okay, uh, but, uh, you know, play it cool. You don't want to worry unnecessarily. And uh, meanwhile, I'll go ahead and pre-alert the Civil Air Patrol in the area then. Yes, sir, Sheriff Cotty. Major Tubbs is on another mission right now, but I'm briefed on it. Well, you can tell him that the search parties have been unloaded. We got all of our equipment ready. The refueling truck is on the scene. We're ready and can leave any time. What about the medics? Uh, one's on the helicopter, one's with the ground party. Good. Listen, we're going to need more help. We're going to find those kids before dark. It gets pretty cold down there. Can you give me some civil air patrol assistance? We can try, Sheriff. I'll connect you with the CAP in Roanoke. Yeah, sure. That'll be fine. They should be able to get their ground teams together, too. Any chance of getting some dog teams out here? Sure come in handy. It'll be dark by the time we airlift them in, but we can put them on alert, pending your progress. You can have them by the first light in the morning. Anything else you need? Uh, we can sure use a little luck. I'll keep you informed. Sure thank you a lot. 
Roger, Sheriff. We'll have a crew change here in less than two hours, but they'll be briefed on the mission. Okay. Stand by for a patch to Roanoke CAP. Thanks a lot. Yes, is this Red Bluff 5874? Yes, it is. Well, I've been trying to reach this number for a while, ma'am. Is this Mrs. Henderson? Yes, when an airplane is overdue, the center often contacts members of the pilot's immediate family. This is only done to obtain information that might assist in determining possible locations of the overdue airplane. News that the airplane is missing or overdue must be presented tactfully, with full assurance that a preliminary investigation is underway. If the investigation indicates further action, a full-scale search and rescue operation will be launched at once. Friends for a weekend of hunting. Has there been an accident? Don't worry, Mrs. Henderson. We have no information to indicate Something has happened. Let me give you our toll-free number here. No flight plan filed. Family concern. He just didn't arrive when they thought he should. The uh, Air Force Rescue Coordination LA Center is a 24-hour-a-day operation, and the afternoon relief crew is now being briefed on the missions in progress. Major Prescott is briefing the oncoming crew of the aircraft mission and indicating the family members contacted and the concern of both relatives and friends. Gentlemen, this is a briefing on mission 2-119. The Major Tubbs is briefing the latest information on the search for the two missing hikers and the status of assistance being provided the U.S. Coast Guard in the joint search mission for the overdue fishing vessel. Male companion, and they were exploring some caves up there, and she uh, fell down into one of the caves and broke a leg. The 130 gave us a fix on that ELT. Gave us coordinates of 4028 north, 12128 west, which puts it right about here. A wilderness area, right on the eastern slope of Lassen Peak. Yeah, about at the 8,000 foot level, too. The problem's going to be recovery now. And with uh, weather coming in, that's going to create problems. Look, there's a ranger station here about 15 miles north of the area. You contact the Park Service and see if they've got any resources. I'll contact the California CAP and Nevada CAP, put them on standby. With this weather, we've got to get them out now or they're going to be buried for the winter. Yes, Sheriff Bacardi, I can take information. I just got a call from a Virginia CAP. They've spotted a hiker, a lone male, and he's moving fast. So let's hope it's our boy. He can lead us to that cave. It's getting dark up here. Good afternoon, Air Force Rescue Center, Sergeant Beatty. Yes, this is Sheriff Picotti. We have a find. One of the helicopters sat down near the trail and made contact with the boy. A ground team was directed to them and they found the cave. How's the girl, sir? They're bringing her out now. I understand she has a broken leg and mild concussion. I think she'll be all right, though. The boy's being treated for exhaustion. If they had have hiked by the rules and obeyed park regulations, they could have avoided all this trouble. Copy, Sheriff. We'll be taking her to the Fort Lee Medical Facility before transferring to our private hospital. We'll mark this mission as safe. That's the way I like them. Thanks, Air Force Rescue. I'll file a report and send you one of the copies. Sorry to disturb you at this time of the morning, ma'am. This is Major Farnham from the Air Force Rescue Center. Air Force? Why would the Air Force be calling me? Do you know what time it is? I realize, ma'am, it's pretty early out there in California. But we're uh, working on an alert notice from the FAA regarding a flight between Bakersfield and San Diego, and the flight plan indicates that the aircraft is overdue. Overdue? What do you mean? San Diego? Well, we're just following through. Are you Mrs. Cody, and is George Cody your husband? Yes, he is. Um, what's wrong? George, wake up. There's someone from the Air Force who wants to talk to you. Just a minute. He'll be right with you. You mean he's there? That's good news. You see, ma'am, he was supposed to have closed out his flight plan once he got to San Diego. Okay, gentlemen, this will be a briefing on the aircraft that we've got down in Northern California. 
It's been, uh, we've been working it all night. Uh, we've got a 130 over the area, we've got a good ELT, and we've got indications that uh, there's survivors on the ground. The 130 has been orbiting the area all night. It'll be sun up there in about 90 minutes and the H-53 can go in. Do you still have contact with the survivors? Yes, sir. Someone down there really knows how to use that ELT. When they heard our C-130 circling overhead last night, they started turning it on and off in response to our radio calls. Apparently, they can receive but cannot transmit. Evidently, they worked out a simple code, so we know they're all alive. With the pilot, we think, uh, being injured, we don't know how badly. Now the weather's moved out of the area, and the Civil Air Patrol can get in under the overcast. When they spot the wreckage, they can direct the H-53 and the ground team's in. It'll have to be a hoist pickup. No way to get a ground party in there on time. And we don't want to drop supplies. They might get lost in the snow or it would endanger the survivors trying to go after them. Okay, contact the 130 aircraft commander. Advising the CAP aircraft will be coming in. The C-130 will be on scene commander and assigned search altitude to ensure aircraft separation. The CAP will contact him on 123-1 as they enter the area. Right, Colonel Verdell. And better get out an ops message to alert all military VFR low altitude training flights that will be affected by the search. Good mission on that cave rescue. That girl's really lucky. It's a good thing the weather held out or she might not have been so lucky. One night in that cave. And one night on the side of that cold mountain. I was hoping they'd be picked up by the time we came on duty this morning. Thank you, Major. Keep me informed. This is the RC standing by. Go ahead, uh, Scott Airways. I have Rescue 904 on HF radio. Go ahead. Rescue 904 here. How do you copy? You loud and clear, Rescue 904. What's your report on Mission 120? We dropped flares during the night. Got a response from the survivors. They still cannot transmit on the radio. But CAP has a visual verification. They can spot the wreckage now. Tail number is November 2583 Gulf. And they can see survivors. Okay, understand Rescue 904. Our Super Jolly was on the ground at Red Bluff overnight. He's off now and being rooted. Estimated time of arrival about 30 minutes. The ground party is still about eight, eight tough miles away from the target. And you'll go for a waste pickup? That's affirmative, Rescue 904. That's affirmative. The search portion of the mission has been successful, and the recovery effort is underway. Three survivors appear to have minor injuries. The fourth may be more critically injured. Mr. Henderson, this is Air Force Rescue Center. I have some good news for you. They've located your son and the helicopter is picking them up now. The Air Force Rescue Coordination Center coordinates all types of emergency search and rescue efforts in accordance with their motto. These things we do that others may live. 